finally it's March and for me that means two things one the annual run of places coming in and two birch tapping now when I say birch tapping I don't mean walking up to a tree and doing this no I mean getting that out seen that other people have been there before yeah and and the sense of bushcraft and the outdoors doesn't just appeal to me it appeals to a hell of a lot of other people and i've just stumbled across this little shelter that someone's made it ain't a bad little job to be honest a bit of moss and a few leaves and that'd be waterproof as anything but other butchers at this that ain't bad at all is it <laughs> practically a double bedroom cracking so this is what we're after guys this is called silver birch and that's what we're going to be making our um well that's what we're going to be taking the sap out of today a nice bit of silver birch oh jesus cool. I didn't, I didn't get so close to stacking it, but it was unreal. Right, I found a tree, finally. I'll tell you what, in this woodland, there's so many birch trees. It's crazy. And this is what this is what we're after. The water that they use fertilizes these. Well, not fertilizers. Enables the tree to start producing bud. And that's what we're after. The sap isn't just any type of water it's water that's been filtered through the tree from the ground and it only happens what uh, two weeks out of the year so anywhere between march and may is the time to get it the nutritional benefits of um birch sap are incredible but it just tastes good and it gives you that it gives you that taste of the spring you know you know spring's coming when you've tasted birch sap trust me give it a go get out and do it you will not regret it so all the times that I've been doing, you know, birch tapping, I've really figured out that the best the best way for me to tell if there's birch sap coming out of the actual tree is just to go and make a small incision in the bark. You only want to go, you know, pretty shallow. But um, when it starts, when the sap actually starts running freely from the tree, you know it's ready to go. So I've made a small incision at the top. And you can see the, the sap starting to flow out pretty nicely now. Um, and it's actually dripping down the bottom. So if I show you now. I don't know if you can see that. Please focus. There you go. You can see it. You can see it dripping off. And that's the incision there. So that is a lot. That is a lot of um, sap coming out for a, small, for a small hole. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find a bit of hazel. And we're going to make a spile. Then we're going to all go into the tree, get a pot, wrap it round. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, get it done. So I made my spile. All I've done is found a little stick on the floor, taking all the bark off it. Um, and then usually there's a bit of there's a channel in the middle of the in the middle of the sticks. So I've just hollowed that out as to give like a kind of like a natural ravine for the uh, sap to flow down. And that will go straight into my billy tin which is here and then yeah so, right, so let's get it set up and then uh, all you need to do is just leave it after that I mean once you've drilled the hole out um, use a auger this is one I bought a little while well, a couple of years, well actually saying a few years ago I used to use a drill 
but it's just too much effort carrying the drill and everything around in the woods. Um, I like to go minimalist, so I bought this. It's just a little auger with a T-bar at the top that you can just slot in. Um, and to be honest, it works just as well. It takes a little bit longer, but there's no noise and you haven't got to carry a drill around with you. So it makes more sense for me personally. I mean, you, you guys do what you got to do. But um, right, let's get this drilled out. We can put the um, spile in and we can start getting our boat sap. Happy days. All right, let's get it done. You only want to go a couple of centimetres in. You don't want to go too far in. And you want to try and go at an angle as well. Just to help it flow down. And we are in. This is a fairly skinny tree, so... We just want to ideally hit the sapwood. Not quite deep enough, but you can see the sap coming out. But I can anyway. I don't know if you can or not. That's done. There it is. It's not quite big enough. So I'm gonna make another one. So this one, this one isn't quite big enough. Um, so I'm gonna quickly make another one. I'll get everything set up, I'll tie, I'll tie it on, and then I'll give you a shout back. Well, well, welcome back. So after a painstakingly long time of trying to find a proper tree, <laughs> I managed to find one finally. So the, the tree that we did earlier wasn't really producing that much. Um, and obviously I wanna, I wanna try and get as much as I can in the short amount of time that I've got. Um, so what I did with this tree is, uh, if you're gonna come out birch tapping, just make sure you respect the actual tree, all right? Just um, plug it up with a bit of wood and then trim it off, which is what I've done here. So I'll be trimming this in a second. I'll show you now. And then just trim it off. Um, that'll just help prevent uh, infection for the tree and you know, bugs and stuff getting in there um, and giving it a really bad day. Um, so the new setup is this one. Um, found a thicker tree. The, the pot has been tied around um, the tree uh, and we're currently collecting Butch sap. Um, so we've made a spile again, a little bit thicker this time, um, and we've got not a bad little flow on there. I'll show you. And this is how much I love it. I've even got a pot underneath catching uh, everything that falls off. <laughs> There we go. So that is basically birch tapping. So I've, I've, I'll do it every year. Um, I've done it for years. As I said earlier, it's just a really nice way to taste the spring. I mean, if you've never given it a go, you should. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just really, really, really nice. So um, yeah, fill up. I think we'll, um, oh, not a little bad little quantity in there now. Do you know what? That might not look, look, look a lot to some people, but we've only been here a short amount of time, so that ain't bad at all. But one thing I'm going to do is have a look around and see what else is about, because I do want to, um, I do want to try and find some tinder 
um, for future episodes. For instance, but it's bark. But this is quite wet. So if we can find some birch bark or even some fatwood, um, I'll be quite a happy man to be honest. Let's have a look around and see what's about. Guys, you should get out and do this yourselves. It's it's incredible, honestly. Being at one with nature and coming out and just appreciating what you've got on your doorstep. I mean, this is your birthright. So, so do it, you know? I mean, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Old tree root there. And I can bet you any money that is full of fatwood. I've got a feeling that that is going to be full of fatwood. So that was a root from a coniferous tree. A coniferous tree, or conifer, as they like to be called, <laughs> they like to be called, um, as people like to call them, is a, a tree that's green all year round. So things like pine, um, that sort of thing. The other type of tree is called a deciduous tree, which is like the silver birch. They lose their leaves in winter time and then they rebud uh, during the spring. So they're the two types of tree. The woods that we're in today are a mixed, um, a mixed woodland. So conifers and deciduous. Cracking a little horse. You might be able to hear it. Things like that just give me butterflies, man. But yeah, I'm hoping that this is going to contain a bit of a fatwood that we can use for future episodes. So yeah. Oh. I love being out here. It's you and the birds. I love it. Honestly, I absolutely love it. As I said, if you guys don't get out and do this, just go out. Go to the woods. Walk through the woods. <laughs> we'll see how that's getting on, shall we? Well, guys, well, we've left it probably about, around about an hour. Um, I don't have too long today because I have got paperwork and stuff to do, uh, unfortunately. But um, I'm just going to wipe out this. And we haven't got that bad of a haul, to be fair. Um, a lot of you may think it's not a lot. But to be honest, I'm one person. As I said, I've got things to do. Generally speaking, what I'd do is if I went camping, I'd, um, I'd leave it overnight and then come back in the morning. Um, and it would be, you know, full up. And that way it will give you something to drink, you know, throughout the day. Um, and well, one thing I will recommend is that if you're going to do this yourself, which I highly recommend, um, is that you get a bit of muslin cloth or a bit of cheesecloth and put it over the top because that will prevent any bar, uh, you know, bark, bugs, leaves, that sort of thing getting in. Um, because I've currently got plenty. Uh, we, I've never had to chew a drink before. So this is going to be interesting. But anyway, let's see how much we got. We didn't get a bad amount to be fair. Not for the time that we were here, anyway. Yeah, so we've got, we've got a good couple of mouthfuls. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of the biggest bits. Yeah, we've got a good couple of mouthfuls. I'll tell you what. Oh. <laughs> that is the taste of spring. You will never, ever, ever taste anything like this. Ever. In your lives. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. That was incredible. Uh, that's it for this video, guys. It was an absolute pleasure coming out into the woods and bringing you along with me. 
this is just this is just a part of what we're going to go through on this channel so make sure you give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already and um i'll see you in the next one cheers